there could be a safer combination of cameras than the one that they have. And that's where I think people are maybe getting their wires crossed a little bit. But we have to remember that Tesla essentially decided on this entire hardware setup back when they had the Model S and they were migrating from Mobileye to their own internal system. And as they're building out all of their AI team and the FSD software team, they're you know working off of a set of data that is defined by a, those hardware placements. And one of the areas that I, I just don't understand right now, and so I'm not saying that this is the way that it is, but I, I don't see any evidence that really allows me to make a strong determination in one way or the other. It seems like they're, the training data that they're using for FSD strongly depends on the current locations of the cameras. And not only the current locations of the cameras, but actual hardware three hardware. That hardware four takes a lot longer to get the same software than hardware three does. And Cybertruck doesn't even have FSD yet. And why is that? Well, it's because the cameras aren't in the exact same locations. There's, I mean, it could be, it could be the fact that the cameras are not in the same locations. It could also be that the driving dynamics are different. Obviously, the Cybertruck is going to drive much differently than the 3Y, S, or X. And so, you know, maybe it's the driving dynamic side. We don't know. But for whatever reason, we do know that there's something that's complicated about putting FSD into the Cybertruck. And the Cybertruck is going to be a lot easier vehicle to put FSD into than, you know, selling FSD as a license to a third party manufacturer. And so if there's like a long period that we have to go through just to get it into the Cybertruck, how much more difficult is it going to be to put it anything else? Then you start looking at the fact that, well, people are making the argument that if the current camera placement was a problem, they would have fixed it when they did the refresh on the Model 3 and they would have done something differently when they set up the Cybertruck. And that's entirely possible. That could very well be true. But it could also be the case that if they made that change, that it would take them two years to put FSD in whatever vehicle it was that had that new hardware setup. We don't know because we don't have any examples of them actually giving FSD functionality to an entirely new hardware architecture. Um, and so... And all the other thing is they they still haven't even solved FSD yet. And so I could see them wanting to just keep using, like they were already committed to a hardware setup that had a certain orientation, certain fields of view, certain um, constraints as far as the camera sensors that they had and everything. And once you're committed to that path, there's no getting off that train until you have solved FSD to the best of your abilities. And at that point in time, then you can go back and see, okay, how, you know, what do I need to change moving forward so that I could actually make this an even safer system than it is once we have maximized the capability of the software? Because right now that's where you like, the software is still much less safe than the hardware is. So we still have a long, quite a bit of headroom in hardware left that needs to get maximized in software. And once your software safety level matches the level of your hardware and your hardware becomes the constraint, that's when you start looking at, okay, let's, let's make some changes here in hardware. And all of that to be said, you know, I think that level, level three is definitely possible on hardware three, a somewhat constrained level four is definitely possible. Probably a somewhat constrained level five is also possible, but that doesn't mean that we won't see future Tesla robo taxis that have hardware five that does have completely different set of cameras that actually are able to do L4 and L5 driving in more scenarios than hardware three can. That's the takeaway from like a worst case scenario is like, assume that hardware three and hardware four can't do level four. It's like, okay, they can do level three. What other company can do level three in the entirety of the United States? 
Doesn't seem like anybody can. Okay. And so, and what are the bones that allows Tesla to do level three? It's the AI brain with the chips and the data. Who else can do that? Nobody. Can you use that approach to get to level four and level five with a different hardware suite? Yeah. Why is that? Because you capture the camera feed from a thousand cameras and you just toss it to the AI brain and it figures it out. So it's like, even in the worst case scenario, Tesla seems like they're, they are on a, on a runaway train to self-driving technology. That's the way I, that's the way I take it. A hundred percent. Right. And just one thing to think about in that, that will help people to understand the points that I was making previously, that that search engine that we talked about, that provides the training data to the AI brain that figures out how to do the driving right now, that entire search engine is based on hardware three. And so you don't get hardware five, like you don't get to train the hardware five brain with a hardware five search engine until you have millions of hardware five vehicles on the road. And so that's where, you know, you have somewhat of a discontinuity in, or, or like a chicken and the egg problem of what do you do first? Do you actually put a ton of hardware out there on vehicles that you're not going to be able to actually make them smart for a while or yeah i, I don't know how tesla's going to handle that and so that's that is one of those areas that i'm really trying to pay attention to to understand what the solution is going to be there but so my pushback there would be well not really pushback but i think the way i think about that is okay so what is the next generation platform that tesla's building is the gen 3 platform that is built to make millions of cars per year not two million cars per year what you're doing now five ten they want to get to 20 at some point they say 20 30 20 million who knows if that's going to happen but okay so like that gap that they would have with this new hardware suite in theory if tesla's forward looking and they recognize that as a as a as a limiting factor to get to that point then in theory the gen 3 platform would solve that because they'll be able to scale to millions of units per year at a price point that will maximize the types of data points they're looking for, right? So if you have a $25,000 car that's being purchased by people, most people can't afford a $50,000 car or a $40,000 car, but most people, in, at least in places like the United States, could afford a $25,000 car. So it's like the, the, the price of your search engine as it comes down, increases your data set dramatically. So it's almost like, okay, so that is a limiting factor. Great, but they're going to solve that at some point. And so the question becomes, who who else can solve that? <laughs> you know, like, it seems like they're the only player, you know, do they really have that much foresight five, six, seven, eight years ago when they were thinking about putting all this hardware on the cars? My, my answer is yes, but even if they didn't, the fact that they're going down the path of getting cheaper cars on the road and they have an AI brain that can figure out how to drive, those two combined becomes a solution for self-driving. And it's less about the camera placements and it's more about having that AI brain that can take camera feed period and just figure out how to drive. I think that's a, a really good point because the the current camera setup is probably the most similar to how a human would be. You know, you have the forward facing, the wide facing camera, the B pillars where your head is, and then the repeater is facing backwards, kind of like your rear view mirrors. Um, and if you're training off human data who are creeping at these intersections to get good visibility, um, you might not want the data if the car had front facing cameras and it knew that it was creeping into the path of moving vehicles. You know what I mean? That might not be a good thing to, to train on. So right now it works because it's very similar to how we see the road, you know, like. And I don't think the B pillar cameras are like a, a, a deal breaker by any means, because there's a lot of sports cars out there with very long hoods that are actually worse than the where the current B pillar camera is. And they drive on our roads just fine. You know, they're uh, they're level five with a human in the seat. So um, and I also think another I like I really think it's just a, a, a data problem. And I think one of the reasons uh, Cybertruck doesn't have FSD yet is um, something that I have been finding very interesting is that 
I've seen a few Model S's and X's hitting curbs lately with version 12.3, where my car has never been anywhere near a curb. And I think what that may be is there's so much training on the Model Y and Model 3. There's so many of them out there, and they might not have as much data data from the S and X. And they're getting they're driving through turns like they're a Model 3 or Model Y. And I'm not saying that's happening like all the time, but you know everything gets blown up on Twitter. But like it's super interesting to me that that's the case. Um, and I really do think it's a, a a data problem. And as soon as there's a lot of cyber trucks out there, like I think the model will start to figure out like, okay, like as these repeaters are looking left and looking right, like this is how wide the car is. Like not that it's actually thinking that, but it'll kind of figure it out as it has the the data. That's an interesting point. And I think, so what's fascinating about that too, like let's assume that's true, then which, so the unit that has the most on the road will be the one that theoretically has the best performance will gain the 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 performance of self driving first. And that one is going to be over time the cheapest car. <laughs> so the cheapest car, because of that function is going to have the best performance, which is like, huh, what happens, right? Level four Tesla this year? Yes or no, JD? Come on, let's get spicy, bro. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's, Man, that's that's a tough question, man. It's um I feel like I feel like the capability is there, but we start getting into like the uncanny valley of things. Like like for example, I I know I probably shouldn't be saying this, but you know, the number one and number two top causes of uh of accidents and people killing each other are DUI and distracted driving. Like I already think that the people that would be drinking anyway, like they're way better in a Tesla with full self-driving. And I know I shouldn't say that. It's I, I, it's hard to say like, oh yeah, if you go, if you're going to be drinking and driving all the time, go get a Tesla with FSD because it's not perfect yet. It's not ready to replace a driver, but people are doing this anyways. Like there's no stopping people from being distracted or drinking and driving. And like, they're just, these are just human behaviors. There's, we're never going to solve that. We've been trying for years and the accidents and deaths just keep going up and up and up at a dramatic rate. So, um, and the, the other tough thing is, is there's the emotional aspect of it as well, where even if the car is dramatically safer um, than a regular human driver, the rare times that an incident does happen is going to be publicized because, you know, like, oh, I, I wrote down some notes about this. So 117 people per day in the U.S. die from car accidents. That's just in the United States. Um, 117 60, people per 117 day? 117 a day. 6,252 are seriously injured. Okay. They're not dying, but ser like their life has changed forever. That's four per minute, right? So like, it's hard to wrap your mind around the absolute tragedy occurring on our roads every day. Um, and when a Tesla rear ends a fire truck, it is front page news and it is broadcast everywhere. And people just don't understand. It's the uh, it's the trolley problem, man. That's exactly what it is. You know what I mean? Like, say your car is 10 times safer. Tesla is there with a switch saying, like, if we enable this, these 10 people don't die, but we are personally responsible for killing this one. Like, do you make that switch? Um, it's really, really tough. Like, I feel like, and that, problem i didn't think we'd have to be thinking about for quite a while but like the way that ai is going and the way version 12 seems to be progressing very quickly i think it's going to happen sooner than later